I get it now. I know why the left or the progressive think the way they do. Thank you, Destiny. Your debating with various people, most recently Sargon, has given me some insight into the general doctrination of these movements. Third wave, feminism, Black Lives Matter, the immigration movement, and white guilt are all based on the theory that most people are sheep. Let me clarify some. No, actually, I agree. Most people are sheep, but it's not their fault. Society is designed to create sheep. Since the earlier days of man, we had to band together to avoid starvation or falling prey to other creatures. That word went weird on me, and in some cases, other rival societies. It's almost ingrained in humans through various reasons that if we don't fit in with these groups, we die, go mad, or possibly something worse. So what is our choices? We're either sheeps, shepherds, outcasts, or even possibly wolves. So is there anything wrong with being a sheep? Not if your shepherd's leading you to a good goal. The problem with sheep is they can really only follow people, but why they can only follow people, they can choose who they follow. I could go on and on about this metaphor I painted myself into, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Sheep are followers. Shepherds are leaders. Outcasts are people who don't fit into either of these categories. And wolves, well, they just prey on sheep mostly. Mostly, most of them group up to attack the sheep. Some of the crazier ones do the same by themselves. So, what category do I fall in? Personally, I consider myself an outcast due to being raised a white kid in a predominantly minority-enriched area of America. And as some of you who grew up in such areas, I don't want to pretend to be educated because as you can probably guess, the public schools that I attended were extremely poor. That isn't the only reason I fall under the outcast class. The reason for that, I never really fell into one of the cultural groups. And because I was white and I didn't fit in with that small majority of white people at those schools, I really just fell out. I had too many various interests, football, chess, video games. But I didn't really, I just wanted to give you some basic background on myself before I moved on and some of my ideologies behind it. Yeah, let's go with that. Back to the point I was trying to make. All these movements are based on race, religion, or sex, right? Think about the divide of it. Women have Feminism, black have, of course, Black Lives Matter, and the immigration movement mainly has Muslims and Islam behind it. I don't know why there's plenty of other immigrants, but the main crux of the issue comes down to that mainly. What group embodies white guilt? Well, of course, racist groups such as the KKK and neo-Nazis. And yes, I do put those groups in the feel guilt, but those groups should feel the guilt, but leave the rest of us normal white people, possibly minority (laughs) grown up out of it. As a whole, white people has no group that we can go to for support that doesn't make us a flaming racist. This is by why both as a group White people have been supporting Donald Trump, in my opinion. He gives us a place to go. And that's exactly why the left tries to paint him as a racist, homophobic, misogynist bigot. To make it harder for people to get sort support behind him. Donald Trump isn't united in white America as white because the media made that impossible and he probably wouldn't do it even if he wanted to but as Americans because that's what we should do as a nation we are a country of many races religion cultures and sexes and as much as I hate to admit there are more than two sexes there's an in between there but 
That's happenstance. This nation is made up of many different individuals. There are many multiracial people who might be confused about what their racial identity should fall under. There's also so many people confused about whether or not they're male, female, in between, or a giraffe for all I know. As for religions, the term Islamophobia is the scariest term I think I've ever heard. There is a glaring difference between a rational fear of something opposed to a real fear. Yes, as a nation, we shouldn't equate Muslim to terrorists, but many in the country do, and for a good reason, after 9-11. But, like most religious beliefs, there are some who follow it as a practice and teach it as something that binds moral and social values, puts people together as a group. They take it with the teachings with a grain of salt and a measure of reality. Those are not the people we should be scared of. It's those who blindly follow the unbreakable word of their creator, in air quotes. I'm not going to knock it. I'm not going to say it's not the one true religion, but I have my own beliefs. But the same can be said of most religions. But in this nation, we help separation of religion and state. And that's good. That's why gays can get married and criminals can't be let go just because of their tradition. That being said, I have a healthy fear for any religious zealot, no matter their God, because when some nut job thinks God on their side, they can commit the most heinous acts known to man. In short, why am I making this video? To thank destiny for defending the logic of the left with actual logic. I don't agree with it, but at least she tried to make sense and willing to debate a side of a view and gave me and many others insight on opinions that I think come to a faulty conclusion. Sure, in a debate, I probably wouldn't stand much of a chance against him, just as Don Tron really didn't. But as I stated before, I went to a very bad public school system. Why, who knows what sort of upbringing he had, surrounded by all the white people when they grew up in the education and thought, hmm, the left is really getting murdered by these privileged alt-right Nazi. Let me use all my white privilege given to me by the system to help that cause. Let this badly educated man give you a quick lesson in history. The German government became ruled by the Nazis in the era of history that they did because they were hurt from the war. World War I left them devastated. Most of the population was poor as dirt, so when Hitler rallied the public by using the Jews, who were seemingly better off than most of the population, into a scapegoats, people jumped on that shit quicker than they should. And it worked. It rallied a nation, turned them into a superpower that nearly took over Europe at the time. The reason I bring it up is if this country gets to that fucking point where the people get so fed up with the government, it, some power will rise. Some power will say, fuck these guys, let's just do whatever the hell we want. A leader will rise like Hitler. And trust me, Trump is not anything like Hitler. He's a populist. He does what the people want him to do, not what he wants the people to do. There's a clear distinction there. So let's do our best to make this country great for everyone in it. Let's not get to the point where we're so bad we have to, as a nation, do a immoral act to pull our asses out of the fire, metaphorically speaking. If we have to limit immigration for a bit and be more selective with it and deport the few illegals that are draining our taxpayers' money when we could just, they're in jail, okay? We don't even have to look for them half the time. Just the ones in jail we should deport. If they didn't do anything wrong, well, that 
in my opinion, they should stay, but tax evasion should apply to them. I don't know enough about that. I don't care enough about that. As long as this country doesn't get so bad that we end up like Nazi Germany. That's all I care about in this case and for free speech to be up and for people, people to talk about it and for me to be able to make fun of people who call people who are not Nazis idiots. So all those thoughts sprang from probably the first hour of this debate listening to it because I could not take the full two hours and one said it. After finally getting through most of his debate, Destiny if you've lost track with me, with Sargon, I am left with the overwhelming impression that Destiny is a collectivist and disregards any individualist perspective. That's why he's for mass immigration. In his mind, workers equal more labor force, which means cheaper and more products. Somehow he can't relate that people have individual experiences also that differ from his own. No, no one can be a, want to be a construction worker. That's crazy. Build skyscrapers. We did that sort of shit as kids. I cannot imagine why no kid, maybe he's just too young. Maybe he has no imagination. I don't know. He comes up with this outlandish plan that really resembles freaking communism in a lot of ways. The Probably the only point that Jontron made through in his debate. But that's not the point. And even his plan, extra taxes for the rich to give to the poor. <sighs> Believe it or not, people don't like handouts. They would rather work for a living. People need purpose to get by. And stats don't give you a feel for a community. Stop spouting all this bullshit overall. Stats, stats, stats. You're not a fucking doctor, okay? What the hell do you know about this? What do you know about any racist stuff? I misspoke there. Racial stuff. You probably grew up in a white community. Okay. I grew up in a primarily African-American, sorry, black community. Next, Hispanics. Whites were actually beat out Asians. This is probably why I have absolutely no beef with Asians. Love the Asians. Discriminate against white, black, Hispanics. Don't care. Asians are cool in my book. Like them better than my own race. But final thoughts. In my opinion, Destiny, out of those classes I said, is a wolf. But he's masquerading in sheep clothing. He got a taste for blood with Jontron. He wanted more. I know he's been on a rampage after looking for quite a while. He finally got it with John Tron. And I think we need to put this dog down. I'll have to agree with Naked Apes clickbait title, His Destiny, His Autism, if not something worse.